Okay, we continue with chapter 14. Where we left off, we were looking at confidence intervals, and we found out the data for these NAEP quantitative scores. And we found out if 95% probability that our, that our statistical mean will be close to the uh, population mean, and it's going to be between 267.8 and 276.2. So the statement that we can say, we estimate that the mu, that's the population mean, lies within 4.2 of x bar, which is our st statistical mean, and will be right about 95% of the time. Okay, so what does this look like? And here's an example. This is on in your book, and let me see what page it's on, 362. So 362, there's this example here. And they say that if you took a sample of 654 students, you'd get this interval, 654 students, and then second time, 654. In other words, you keep doing these surveys. You keep doing these simple random surveys. And you're going to get all of these results, okay? And these are, so this is what it's going to look like. Let me show you a better description of this in an applet. And you have this applet where you sign up for the, uh, for the quizzes. Now, here's our normal distribution, okay? Let's say you want to set a confidence level of 95%. So you're going to do a sample. You do samples after samples. You take a sample. And this is the mean of the sample you found. So there it is. It falls within our 95%, which is two standard deviations. Two standard deviations right there. And we take another sample. And we take another sample. Oh, that one's a bit on this side. Okay, so now it's still within our range. But if we took 50 samples, you can see that most of them at 95% interest, uh, 95% uh, a confidence interval. See, this one is out. This one is out. This one is out. It's too far, too far. Okay, so that means that we only had 92%. So there were some in our surveys that were off. Okay, so that means that's why it's 95%. Now, if you cleared this and you set it at 80% and you did the sample, then you get more. It's all at 80%. A lot of them fall off. So 80%, you have a smaller range. Okay, 99%. Well, if you did a, you're going to get a 100% hit here because they all fell in 199, which is really close to three, remember it's 99.7, to three standard deviations. So this is an example of a, a picture of how to, uh, how to do this. Okay, so that's uh, what that means there. Now, confidence intervals for the BMI that we did for the young women. Okay, we can go even further. We found, this will go review here a little bit. I'm reading this this uh, paragraph right here. To find the 95% confidence interval for the mean BMI of young women, we first caught the central 95% of the normal sample distribution by going out two standard deviations. Okay, two standard deviations. One, two, one, two. Now, in both directions, to find a level of confidence, we first catch the central area C. We found that. And of the normal sample distribution. Because all normal distributions are the same, we can obtain everything we need from the standard normal curve. So this figure shows how the central area C under a standard normal curve is marked off by two points. These are called critical points, Z star or Z asterisk, and negative Z star or negative Z asterisk. These are marked off specific areas that are called critical values. You set them off before you start doing it. I said, I'm going to do the survey, and this is where it has to fall. Anything that falls over here does not fit. Okay, so if I get a, a mean, st a statistical mean over here, then I can't say anything with confidence. Okay, now what do these values mean? Well, the values of Z star for many choices of C appear at the bottom of table C in the back of the book. So if you go in the back of the book and you find table C, it looks like this. There's table C. Okay, and table C, go all the way down because that's a T distribution, that's something else. You have to go all the way down to the Z. Here's the Z star right here. So the Z star, it's this line over here. Okay? Now if I go back up, let's say 95% interval. It's right here in this column. 95%. This is my confidence level. I go down to the Z and I get 1.960. Let's go back to the book. 1.960. See, they just copied the table from 95 for 90, 95, 99%. So 1.960 is our Z star and negative Z star. Now, <clears throat> the uh, table gives you 1.960, and this is a bit more precise, that's what they say, than 2. <clears throat> the previous problem that we did had a confidence level of 2, but now we have 1.96, so it's pretty well specific. 
And then what does it do? What do we do with this? Well, let me go back to the PowerPoint. This is what it is. We take an SRS of size n. You're the, you're the statistician from a known population, unknown mean, and mu, and a known standard deviation. The interval, confidence interval from you will be this. Your, your mean plus or minus z star times the standard deviation equation here. Okay? It makes it tighter. It makes it even more confident. So it gives you a better, gives you more assurance that what you're finding is actually true to the population. So confidence interval, it looks like this. This is z star over here. One meaning the whole value of this one over here. Okay, C is our confidence interval. So Z star to Z star, negative Z star I should say. Let's look at the same problem with the NAP quantitative scores. Now we're going to use the 68, 95, 99 per 7 rule. Okay, they gave us an approximate 95%. A more precise 95% is when we use the Z star. So we're going to use this equation over here. Over here. Now it's X minus, okay, X bar. We're going to do the minus first, and then we'll do the plus. Minus 1.960, that comes from here, right there. And you multiply by the standard deviation that we got way back when. The standard deviation was found by taking the standard deviation of the population, dividing by the number of people that we surveyed. We get 272, that's our mean, minus 4.116. So now it's even, even more of a number, 267.884. And when we go to the other side, we get 276.116. Okay, so now we can say we are 95% confident that the average NAE quantitative scores for all adult males is between 267.884 and 276.116. We can say that with 95% confidence, okay? And just to make sure that we have the interpretation correct, in the orange here, we are 95% confident that the mean for the population of all adult males is what we just said, 267 and 276 with the decimals. Okay, So that this does not mean that 95% of all males will have these scores between you. So make sure that you know the difference of how to state this and what it means when you read this. So statistically, 95% of all samples of size 840 from the population of males should yield a sample mean with two standard errors of the population mean. Okay, in other words, in repeated samples, I keep doing this, doing this, 840 different times, I mean, I'm sorry, 840 different people, several times, 95% of the confident intervals should contain the true population mean, which means that very similar to what we did over here with these applets, if you recall. Okay, so that's what we did, 95%, let's do this 50 times, boom, all right, now we had two that were off. Okay, so we have 96% hit. It's actually we're better than our confidence interval. Okay, so that's that section there. And one more thing for this uh, video, and we'll do another video as well, is that uh, your confidence intervals are one of the two most common types of statistical inference. This is in your book on page 368. And use a confidence interval when your goal is to estimate a population parameter. Okay, these are called tests of significance. Tests of significance. If we had a drum roll, this would be the time to do it. Now, here's an example. You have a great free throw, you're a great free throw shooter. You claim that you make 80% and test the claim. You ask me to shoot 20 free throws. So I make only 8 out of 20. You say someone who makes 80% of free throws should never make 8 out of 20. So I don't believe your claim. So what the heck does this mean? Your reasoning is based on asking what would happen if my claim were true and we repeated the sample of 20 free throws many times? I would almost never make as few as 8. Okay, so let's look at an example of this. This is another applet that you have. Okay, so this is a reasoning of a statistical test. This assesses the evidence provided by the data against some claim, the null hypothesis. Next video will explain this. The applet allows you to gather data until you're ready to reach a conclusion about the truth of a null hypothesis. That means nothing's going to change. And this is what we're leading up to. So this basketball team, State University, their players throw 80% of the get their 80% of free throws. That means nothing's going to change. To test the claim, you ask them to shoot free throws. Okay, so shoot. Hurry up and shoot. Okay, keep shooting. Keep shooting. Okay, and now we're going to show, and then we can show the null hypothesis, meaning that there's the, right, null hypothesis, no change. 
actually no not hypothesis is there it's to that now hypothesis 80% of the hits okay he's not doing too well maybe he plays for Butler so we show the true percentage okay he's close to 50% rather than 80% all right and he's shooting 25 times here so he's all done okay so we try a new shooter and we do the same thing and you can do that and we can do that forever and then try the new shooter but the whole point here is that we're going to be testing hypotheses all right which is going to be leading to the next video so we'll talk about that